Hey, Bunny, guess what? What? Twelve. No, you have to actually guess. Skinned fat chicks. No. No. I mean, not yet. I mean, I mean... Skinned fat chicks, sure, on a maybe if we were doing this on a Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> but not today. I mean, that's just weird. But look, that's not important right now. What is important is this. Bunny. What? Look, this is this is this is gonna sound crazy, okay? Yeah. But just hear me out, okay? Okay. Okay? Okay. 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 So <laughs> no, just, just hear me out. So, this is the beginning of the weekly homework section of the podcast, and each week we do an introduction, right? Right. Well, I don't know how to start <laughs> how to start the homework this week. I I don't know how. I don't know what to say. I didn't know what to write. I just don't know what to do. To get to the homework, to get this thing going, I, do, I, I, I don't remember. I lost all of my notes in, in, a, in, in the, the tragic universal fire. So, so Bunny, mm -hmm. I need you to turn into a trampoline. Okay. Look, Bunny, I don't know how to say this, but uh, about six months into first starting the podcast. So round about the beginning of 2015, I hired some guys to inject you with nanobots while you were sleeping. Oh, is that what that was? Then about a year ago, I hired an ex CIA guy to Manchurian candidate genie. And genie was trained to implant you with a subdermal chip that could call upon the dormant nanobots in your bloodstream to resurrect your genetic makeup and your anatomy and allow you to transform into a trampoline. Uh -huh. So that you, you just got to concentrate, bunny. Okay. Okay. Concentrate. You can do it. You can do it. And turn mm -hmm. into a trampoline. Bunny. You can do it. Concentrate. Think bouncy bouncy just just think just think bouncy to think think a bunch of white kids jumping on your skin bouncy bouncy think just just think just think of sitting bouncy. out in the rain <laughs> and rusting neglected oh wait oh wait never mind, never mind never mind never mind i now i remember the opening to the homework segment oh. we do it every week. Okay, yeah, no, we're good. We're all good. It's fine. Don't forget everything I said about the whole trampoline thing. Okay? What just forget all about thing? that. Okay. Yeah. No, just forget about it. It's homework time once again on the old Pope on Film podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your music streaming and kindly pay attention! That scared me. I swear. I swear to God, I'm the only person who doesn't stream music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't do uh, like like a, a, what Spotify or yeah, Pandora or uh, Pandora yeah. or anything like that. I never got into it. For starters, they pay musicians horribly. Like, oh, oh we played your song. Here's one tenth of a cent. You too. Mm -hmm. So so they pay horribly. And also, I don't like the whole suggesting things. I, I, hey, I want to listen to Beatles music. And they go, great, here's the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. And it's like, no, I wanted to hear the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> and I also feel that no matter if you're on like a Pandora or something like that, whatever you click on, eventually they'll play you Jack Johnson. <laughs> hey, I want to hear uh, 1960s psychedelic music. Oh, sure, psychedelic music. That's all about love and peace and relaxation. You know who else is into relaxation? Jack Johnson. Here's his song Banana Pancakes off of the Curious George soundtrack. <laughs> it's like, damn it, no. <laughs> 
I just feel that all roads lead to Jack Johnson. I want to listen to N.W.A. Give me some fuck the police. Yes. Yeah. Fuck, mm-hmm. Fucking is a form of love. You know who else loved? Jack Johnson. Here's his song, Banana Pancakes, off of the Curious George soundtrack. He is the Kevin Bacon of music. Yeah, he's the Kevin Bacon of music. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Jack Johnson seven, is also... Seven degrees of Jack Johnson, except it's seven songs. Yeah. Jack Johnson is also one of three impressions that Andy Sandberg could do. That's true. Each week, the dreaded Council of Betty DeVosses chooses a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. Yes. A homework assignment for all people, but not for racists. Yes. So sorry, Trump supporters. Really, really upset about those people that were burning Mexican flags, counter-protesting the protesters at Trump's uh, wall prototype event (laughs) you know because the wall isn't about security it's not like oh no mexicans are illegally crossing the border changing their skin and and genetic material to look like 16 year old white teenagers then entering america's school systems getting shunned growing up getting ar-15s and shooting up schools yes that's why we need a wall. <laughs> the wall's just about racism. It's not about security. No. It's not about making America safer. Hey, we are making America safer. Don't you know that Tennessee has put stricter, uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, laws on their pornography, on internet pornography? That is the devil's doorbell. You're ringing, ladies. That's- we can't allow that. That's the devil's yep. wax stack. <laughs> however, however, uh, you want to marry that seven-year-old? Here you go. Here's a marriage license. If I was a Christian preacher, I would use your verbiage. Take it. Girls, you shouldn't masturbate. When you girls masturbate, you're ringing the devil's doorbell. No, there's literally an ad about that. Yeah? Yeah, it says that masturbation is... Oh, God, I've got to find it. But it's a uh, masturbation is um, cool from, from the devil, and when you masturbate, you're ringing the devil's doorbell, and you're inviting him into your. Oh body God! It go, oh, the, oh, there's a whole Facebook page. I'm on it. It's great. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. See, funny nice. note. Funny note. It's it's something like the five fingers of sin or something like that, or. Huh. Oh, you know what? I think I read that fan fiction. Yeah. Five fingers of sin. That's funny because I uh, because I also heard that Wu Tang album. Oh, snap. The five you know fingers what? of it sin. It was probably named after that song yeah. because that's I, a really popular. Yeah, it was originally an old uh, kung fu movie. The Five <laughs> Fingers of Sin. Sorry, Sunny Chiba. That's right. And this week, we Which are going to be you know? talking about kids' TV shows <laughs> and the old men who are reenacting them. Yes, I, 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 I still want to know how, how, how did this happen? How did I don't know. So one of them. I imagine. I, I, I imagine that it's a funny joke because for a thumbnail, they use a picture from iCarly. So I believe that the only reason why these videos were created was so that young kids could go, oh, here's an iCarly episode. Click. Oh my God, these people are all 50 year old men. <laughs> like that's funny. They even made it as long as an episode of iCarly. So that's actually kind of genius. That's- you know, yeah. we should do that with Sex in the City Hell episodes. Yeah, Like, that would be funny. God damn it! What? What happened? Eleanor loves going into Emerald's room and destroying all of her very expensive makeup. Was that Emerald screaming? No, that was Natasha screaming. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 this, first... this, this was pretty amazing. And, 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 I enjoyed it. And, you were even able to get past that they were a bunch of grown men and start being able to really just pick on the episode itself. Well, until the old yeah. guy came. The old guy. Oh, God. Yes. My favorite line of the whole thing. Yeah. 
my favorite line of the whole thing was watching that old man walk out and say, has anybody seen my lotion? Yeah, no, the, the, <laughs> yeah, no, you don't, it, it's all about these about little it. kids, think these about like it. young think kids, about these it. like think about teens. It. But then, but then one of them, Carly has an older brother. So yeah. it makes sense that if these are like 30 and 40 year old men that are doing this episode, that the older brother would then be older than these 30 and 40 year old guys. Uh huh. So it makes sense if you know I Carly to have one character. Yeah, it makes sense to have one character be like a 60 year old guy. Yeah. When my family first got cable, it was the very early 80s. MTV only showed music videos, and they hired. I was thinking about this. They hired VJs. Yes. Video jockeys, DJs for videos. Now they only hire rich, pregnant 16 year old girls for shitty reality shows that no one watches. Speaking of reality shows, I meant to bring yes. this up earlier, but I have had a great idea for a new <clears throat> reality game show. Okay. Okay, you ready? I would totally yes. I would totally watch this. Okay. Peer review. You have a board of scientists. Those are your judges. So you would have like three or five of them. You would definitely need to get Neil deGrasse Tyson to host. Okay. Okay. And from there, any crackpot, whether it's a young earth creationist, a flat earther, whatever you got, come on the show and try to get your idea through peer review. I'm down we, with that. We will give you a scientist to work with and a lawyer so that this yeah. is completely fair. Please go ahead. Prove your theory. Get down. I, I've, got, I've got what might be a good title for it. It just came to me while you're explaining it to me. Yeah. Science Eye for the Christian Guy. <laughs> Yes, but it would not necessarily be just Christians. We would we would have to yeah. be open to all crackpot theories. Yeah, and but that's still, it. that's a that's a strong title. That is a strong title. That is a strong title. Really proud of that title. <laughs> uh, so back when my family first got cable, the Disney Channel was primarily old Disney cartoons and Disney movies. Now it's next to impossible to see any of that shit. Now it's all original programming and or cartoons deciding to sell toys and shit. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Then there's Nickelodeon, the kids network. Now here's some history. It started as a network called pinwheel in 1977. So technically yeah. I am as old as star Wars and I am as old as Nickelodeon. And that's really weird. Uh-huh. I thought Nickelodeon so was started by the Nazis. Nickelodeon? Yeah, I thought I heard that somewhere. You might have. In 1979, Pinwheel relaunched as Nickelodeon. Here's the weird thing. Like, like saying that is glossing over a lot of really weird shit. Originally, Pinwheel was an experimental interactive network that was only available via this thing called a cube, a Q-U-B-E. Okay. It, it it was like a special type of cable box that was installed into your home, but like pre-cable. It was started in 1977 in Ohio as a way for Warner Brothers to try and sell their movies and programs directly to people in their homes. Hmm. So you got like a cube and you could buy movies, kind of like... So a pay-per-view like, box or something. Yeah, yeah kind of like a pay-per-view box, but they also had channels. And so Pinwheel would show uh cartoons and stuff but then like from from like four to eight it would be interactive and it would be like a live closed circuit sort of thing so it would be a live show and you could vote on things through your cube Uh uh-huh okay it's really odd shit and it landed for for it, it lasted for like two years it was basically cable but with limited interactivity so it's it's kind of neat and there's a so much fucking information about it but but in 1979 this odd experiment pinwheel the kids 
the interactive kids network transformed into an actual 24 seven cable channel. So at first they did not have a lot of original shit. Yeah. And Nickelodeon like, Oh my God, how many hours are in a week? Oh, we are fucked. We need, we desperately need stuff. Yeah. You know, so Nickelodeon would show like an hour of a show from Canada like, yeah. you can't do that on television. And then after that, they would show an hour of British kids' cartoons. <laughs> like Danger Mouse and Count Duckula. Yeah. It was really neat. They were so desperate for programming that they would literally pick whatever odd shit they could find. Mr. Wizard, today's special. It was really weird. It was Mr. Really Wizard bizarre. was cool. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Wizard was literally just an old guy and two kids in a room doing science. Really weird. Yeah. You couldn't yeah. do that today. Yeah. Grab some <gasps> stuff off of Emerald's desk. She, she grabbed some stuff off of Emerald's desk. Some makeup. And then I walked in there and her eyes were completely covered. I smelt nail polish, so I thought it was nail polish. Oh, oh, Jesus. But no, it wasn't nail polish? No. Thank goodness. No, it was foundation. Okay. But she had opened up the nail polish. That's why I smelled nail polish. And then she stuck the nail polish brush in the foundation. Oh, God. Okay. So now I can't use that foundation anymore. Um, I was able to clean the nail brush off enough that she should probably be able to use the nail polish again. But I've got nail polish on me now. And now I'm just going to bathe her. You would think after so many times that someone would learn to close the door to their room that they would learn to close the door to their room. Well, I mean, right? Like, you, you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting yeah. different results. Yeah. And it's like the definition of crazy, right? Everyone's crazy. It's like President George W. Bush said, fool me once, shame on you. Fool you twice. Look, a fooler don't get fooled again. Mm -hmm. That legendary wise, that legendary bit of advice. Wise Classic. words from that, a wise uh, man. Yeah. Oh, wait, you said George W. So, Bush. Sorry. Yeah, George W. Bush. <laughs> so they were desperate for programming and they would pick this like weird shit and they put it on Nickelodeon because they were just desperate. Then it was neat. Then in the 80s, they slowly but surely started doing more and more of their original shows. But they originally said, like in the 80s, they said, no animation. We're not doing any animation. It's way too expensive. Okay. We'll get animation from other people. Let's pick these Canadian cartoons. Let's pick this, these cartoons that, that this network is doing, but we're not doing any animation on our own. Way too expensive. Then in 1991, they did three original cartoons, only three. They said, we'll do cartoons, but not a lot. We'll, we'll just start out. So they did Doug, Ren and Stimpy, and Rugrats. Those were their, their nice three teaming. First original cartoons. Doug became such a huge thing that uh, they sold Doug to Disney. Disney bought Doug from Nickelodeon. Nice. Yeah, and they made like a Doug movie and Doug the TV show. Really, really like good on Nickelodeon. And then uh, Rugrats, I think they're they're still all over the place. And that was and also, they, they, they also at least had one movie, Rugrats. Oh, Rugrats had a shit ton of movies. Yeah. Yeah, they had a, they had a shit ton of those. And so they so those three cartoons were big. Then Nickelodeon just said, "Okay, we're going to try and be all original content." So then they it would that's when Nickelodeon really exploded like in the 90s cartoons, preschool content, sketch comedy, and sitcoms. Then in the 2000s the cable landscape started to change. It was, you know, not everybody had cable. And it became difficult for for cable networks to to be commercially commercially viable in this new landscape. And so, both Nickelodeon and Disney really needed to save money. How can we save money? How can we save money? I know the same way that NBC, CBS, and ABC stayed relevant uh, through survived through so many decades. Cheap ass sitcoms. Yes. Because sitcoms, you just need like uh, three cameras, some okay actors, uh -huh. maybe like four sets and a laugh track, and you've got a show. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so kids networks realized that. And then suddenly all of these kids networks were flooded with these cheap 
semi well done bland TV shows. Good luck, Charlie, Jesse, Austin and Allie, Zach and Cody, Victorious, Romeo, Dog with a Blog, Ant Farm, Drake and Josh, The Naked Brothers Band, Zoe 101, The Witches of Waverly Place, True Jackson VP, Jonas, Lab Rats, Shake It Up, That's So Raven, Zach and Cody again, because they got <laughs> two shows. And Sam and Cat, which was a very popular show, but it was it it it, it was wildly successful, but was canceled only after only one season because near the end of the first season, um, an iCloud leak happened, and both of these uh, uh, of age actresses on a Nickelodeon kids show had all of these uh, sexy semi nude pictures leaked on the internet. <laughs> so so they canceled the show because suddenly like oh hey this is like a super popular show it's our number one show oh wait here they are showing their breasts in a bra sorry we got to cancel your wildly popular show uh, and it's, not, then, it's not like it was their fault why are they getting punished no 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 it wasn't their fault but still they got punished for it yeah and then that brings us to the Nickelodeon sitcom iCarly. It ran for seven seasons, and unlike most kids' sitcoms that one day just stop, this show got an honest to God series finale that made Tina Fey cry. Really? Okay. I was, yeah, I was reading an article. I was reading an article. Uh, I remember reading an article about the the series finale of 30 Rock and Tina Fey talks about oh yes we've been writing the last season it's been very difficult I've been with these people for, for so long and their family and it's difficult to end this series and to say goodbye to these people the other day I just said you know what I'm not going to write anymore I'm just going to spend time with my kids and I sat down with my daughter and she said, Mommy, do you want to watch TV with me? And she said, Sure. And so we sat down, and it was the series finale of iCarly, and I just start crying like a baby. <laughs> so, so that's awesome. <laughs> like all kids' sitcoms, iCarly was kind of quickly done. It had yeah. hideously broad characterization and ridiculously stupid sitcom y situations, and the world the world's oldest laugh track. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I loved, I loved the show. It ran from 2007 to 2012. Mm -hmm. I loved the show, but the only reason I loved it was because of Carly's BFF, Sam. Okay. She, she was played by Jeanette McCurdy. She's super talented, and she was on this strange Canadian sci-fi show on Netflix that Natasha and I watched for a while. It was this weird show where it, in this one specific town, everyone over the age of 22 dies. Okay. And that's the entire premise of the show. They're not sure if it's a gas. They're not sure if it's... It, they're not sure what it is, but the entire town becomes quarantined and all of these young people are in charge of it. And then and then they worry that, oh, no, uh, this person is about to turn 22. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure everything will be fine. See, it's my birthday. Everything's great. I'm still alive. <laughs> it was like an interesting premise. And she 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 was like the star and she was she got pregnant at a young age and so she's pregnant through it and she's worried and she's trying to escape it, it was really interesting uh Jeanette McCurdy I'm in love with her um cool. so that brings us to this I Carly season one episode 13 an episode entitled I am your biggest fan that is redone shot for shot line for line and scene for scene by middle-aged men bunny your thoughts I oh my thoughts are hard to sum up because like I said, after a little while you just have to dismiss in your head, okay, this is middle aged men. You just dis except for when you get to Suzay. I'm Suzay. Yeah. <laughs> um so the, the the one joke basically of what they were doing was over kind of quickly 
And then it yeah. was the rest of it was actually just watching an episode of iCarly, basically. Yeah. In which that was a lot of that. Yeah, that was a lot of episodes in, of iCarly. In which they were being just a little bitch to this other girl. <clears throat> yeah. Who really, yeah. really liked them. Yeah. So so I, so so like like I can't really say that this was horrible as much as iCarly was horrible. Yeah. That's what I like about this is that I I love this because seeing this episode acted out by these middle-aged men sort of either purposefully or inadvertently shows just how kind of shitty all of these kids sitcoms are. Yeah. There are different settings each show, and there are different actors and different actresses. But beyond that, so many of these are like disposable, reusable, interchangeable. Yeah. Jesse is Austin and Allie, is Drake and Josh, is iCarly. There's very little in terms of originality. There's no pushing the envelope. But then again, you can say that about so many sitcoms. Didn't we discuss Jake and Josh not too terribly long ago and something about a wedding? Yes, yes, we were talking about that the other day. Yeah, yeah. Drake and Josh, they had a TV show together for the longest time, and then the fat one from Drake and Josh got married and didn't invite the skinny one. Yeah. Josh was the fat one, Drake was the skinny one, yeah. Josh got married and didn't invite Drake. It's like, damn, you were on this show for however long. I must, I'm assuming when Mork got married, he at <laughs> least sent an invitation to fucking Mindy. Uh-huh, yeah. That's cold. <laughs> oh, my God. Bunny, can you believe that they kicked Spencer out of the band? <gasps> or Splinter. Yeah. Or whatever. Splinter. Splinter, yeah. Yeah. Has anybody that, seen my lotion? Yeah. <laughs> and that character, the, uh, the, the psycho stalker of iCarly. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Like Mandy. Was it Mandy? Yeah. Yeah, uh, she became she became a regular foil for the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I will say that this video actually did move me and that I'm watching it and and, uh, and I'm and Emerald sitting next to me and I'm like, Emerald, hey, Emerald, do you want to watch an episode of Re of iCarly redone shot for shot, line for line and scene for scene by middle aged men? And she's like, eh, OK. <laughs> so she sat there she she sat there she watched the entire thing with me and uh we're watching it and we're watching it and and it's kind of boring and and it's done so it's done so I didn't realize that the characterization was so poor that that like halfway through the show both Emerald and I went Oh wait, so that's Carly? <laughs> wait, I thought this guy was Carly. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that person's Carly. Oh, well, when you don't have uh, two completely different teenage girls, I guess it's very difficult to tell the characterization of these two characters. Yeah. Like, Carly and Sam were interchangeable, but we're watching it, and, and oh my god, there's like this weird, creepy demon right next to their couch. Yes. They, 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 yeah. yeah, trying and to he get a saying, look at that thing. He, he kept going, what is that? And then it would go, I don't know. Go, what is that? It scared the fuck out of Emerald and I. <laughs> There's a demon right next to uh, Carly's couch. Yeah. And it's like, ah! With something in its belly. Thing? Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and, yeah, and it, was, it, it was pregnant with, with a demon baby. Or something. No, there was something I, in the I kind of I interpreted it like like maybe it ate Gaia. I got a picture of it, honey, if you want to see. Really freaking weird. I immediately took a picture and sent it to Bunny. Yes. You gotta take a look at this demon. Yeah. Some weird looking stuff, right? It's like a creepy alien demon monster. It's scary, but I will say I was moved. So kudos to the guys who made this episode. Yes. Yeah. Now, I have no information on these. 
I don't know who these people are. I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know why there's a number of episodes and they're all hosted on different YouTube accounts. I, I really think we need explanations. <laughs> I, I, What's even no no but no but this might be a conspiracy this might be a a, a baby conspiracy yeah uh, here's the strange thing I was informed of this trend of middle aged men reenacting iCarly episodes via an article that I read online so then I'm like oh I I'm, I should track these down so I track down one episode and then I put it on one of my playlists where I keep all of the possible homework for the future uh-huh. and then I forgot about it. And then I said, oh, hey, it, like, a, like a number of months later, I said, hey, maybe we should do that iCarly thing this next week. So I looked for the episode and I watched the episode and then I went to go look for the article uh-huh. that I originally wrote. It's nowhere to be found. Oh. Do you think you were guided by hidden hands? I don't know. Demon by the couch. Ma- yeah, maybe by, by the maybe couch. the monster... Yeah, maybe the monster on the couch led me there. But I, I looked everywhere. I'm like, it had to have been the Onion AV Club because the Onion AV Club has a a, a segment on the show called uh, a, a, a segment with uh, people find something weird on the internet and then they send it to the Onion AV Club and then they do an article about it. So it, that has to be where it is, and it wasn't there. And I, I, I did, I did Google searches and Bing searches and Google News searches and looking for iCarly reenactments. And the, the article, whatever article I read, is not on the internet anymore. Oh God, that's not that's not possible. So, I, yeah, yeah. It's it's weird. I, I where where whatever the article is that I read I, is n- the article is not there anymore. So what I'm saying is this is a huge conspiracy. Yes. Yeah. But I but I absolutely love this. I think that more people should do more shows from their house. Gilligan's apartment. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Have it done by like by like four dudes but maybe just like wigs you know yeah. get a red wig and a blue and, and like a and like a brunette wig with pigtails yeah. that would work yeah. yeah and that is it for homework this week so and we really sincerely hope so we sin real sin real serially we really do hope that your hearts Minds and cursed artifacts have all been suitably opened. Ah, but don't think that you're getting out of here that easily, buck chacho. <laughs> don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, we are watching a full pilot episode of a 1978 sitcom. Okay. I'm very excited about this. Very, very excited about this. I'm, I, I am sending it to you via the Facey Bookie Messengeries okay. right now. It's a 19. It's the full pilot episode of the 1978 sitcom Space Force. Okay. It's an actual 1978 sitcom about the United States Space Force. It is the broadest comedy you will ever see this side of Hee Haw. I don't recall this at all. It features a young Fred Willard. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And oh my god, there's so much scenery chewing. I thought, I, like, I, I'm, I'm surprised that everyone on this show didn't literally just start cookie monstering the set. <laughs> so basically, we will be going back to 1978 to learn what our future is going to be with our United States Space Force. Okay, now that Trump's on it. Yeah. Now that Trump's finally on it, we're going to learn the future by going back into the past. Mm -hmm. So that is next week. Join us next week for more homework 
with the Pope on Film Podcast. And cut on that. <laughs>